There's an Infusion release out today on March 28th. Let me give you the lowdown. So design advice is at a preview. That's a product design extension feature. To get to it, you'd have to enable the extension and then go to design advice up here. You have to choose some different settings, but then it's supposed to analyze and tell you whether or not your parts are gonna basically fail. It seems to be mostly suited for plastic injection molding, and I did not design this for this, but obviously big fail otherwise. <laughs> You can now export up to four studies at once in generative design, which is a nice time savings. There's a bunch of new stuff in electronics. I don't really use this very much, but I think it looks like it's pretty exciting stuff. You can go check that out. Maybe my favorite part of this update is being able to manage revisions and drawings a little bit better. So now underneath tables, you'll have three more options, revision history, marker, and clad. I'd start out with the uh, history here. You can add a table. It's a little too big, but that's fine. You can then add a revision, which is just a row, and be able to set some settings within that. So you can have those by number or by letter. I don't love the way you select these things. They're a little bit wonky. I can't even figure out where to select to move it. <laughs> so then you can add in your text here, like big changes, and then who approved it. Then you can add things like revision markers or clouds. So let's say this part changed. It's really easy just to click and add. Probably the easiest I've seen of any CAD software. And then we want to add a marker. So it lets you choose what the marker is. Pretty awesome little changes. It doesn't really tie into the manage extension yet, but I hear that potentially could be on the horizon. I think it's pretty great because I was doing this before with just tables and it was a lot of work to keep all that up to date on my own. We jump over to the manufacturing space. One of the updates is if you use three plus one or three plus two positional machining, you can now use that in just the commercial package. So something like this, where we need to set up the tool orientation, it's not automated. So these are more advanced features, not for a hobbyist. Typically, this is something where you need like a fourth axis trunnion or a fifth axis machine. This is going to be pulled down from the machine extension to just commercial users, which is pretty welcome. And then the change here is that anything that's full simultaneous machining, like a five axis, four axis, will need to be machining extension. I think that totally makes sense. And to me, this means most likely, if I had to guess, that we're moving more into potentially new other multi-axis options or you know other 3D options that fit into that category. You can go see a different kind of, uh, you can go see a little graph they've created here on how they break that out, and I think it makes quite a bit of sense, and I appreciate it. Another couple features that are out of preview and now full features in the manufacturing extension are the trim tool path and also the move entry positions, which this is a nice new feature where you can move the positions of your start points so you get you can hide, say, the entry and exit points of your tool paths. I've done quite a few videos on advanced arrange and arrange in general, but it's the Fusion's nesting tool that's kind of built into the design and manufacturing space. And now that it's out of preview, you have to use the extension, the fabrication and nesting and fabrication extension. And so to do that, we'll just do a quick rundown. You go to the design space or the manufacturing space under modify as arrange, and then you want to select your objects from the browser. So you can see here the T's that if you turn on the preview for 3D arrange, it's going to show up right there. And then you can choose the amount of rotations. And one of the other features that you get here is you can choose the grain. So I'm going to choose a plane real quick and choose a size. So when I click preview, it's going to nest all these parts. And the big perk here is you can choose if you want to, say, have the grain be 45 degrees for all these parts and you can also choose different rotations. The other big perk is if you have enough parts, you can actually do multiple sheets, whereas you can't do that in the standard arrange without the extension. You know how unusable Fusion 360 has been while using a Mac trackpad? Well, finally, there's a solution, and there's a preview feature in this release that you can turn on called Native Trackpad for Mac OS. So if you go into Preferences, go to Preview Features, you can turn on Native Trackpad, and now, I'm using the trackpad on my MacBook Pro. It's actually somewhat usable. It's still not what I would consider great, but it's definitely a lot better than it was before. Definitely a nice improvement, go try it out. One more preview feature is 3D Arrange. So you're gonna preferences again, preview features, search for Arrange, you find 3D Arrange. This is gonna be good for try to fit as much as you can in a crate or potentially like 3D printing. So 
modify again, arrange, select all of our object in the browser. You can now choose 3D arrange and the spacing. We now have distance to Z ceiling, object spacing, and voxel sizing. So now you can see we've got these parts stacked in 3D space. If we needed to 3D print these in some type of powder or an SLS or something like that. A couple other non-product related things, cloud credits are turning into flex tokens, which I thought at first, that's kind of dumb, but it's actually more flexible for the user. So you'll be able to use them for things like Inventor, AutoCAD, uh, Revit, 3DX, Max. So any type of uh, Autodesk product, you should now be able to use these credits or tokens for. You don't lose your cloud credits, but you can't buy them anymore. I don't know, not that big a deal. Uh, the other thing is repair issues now are a little bit easier with this new Fusion 360 service utility. It should pop up automatically if you're having issues, but it's something that now you can more easily uninstall or reset or repair Fusion. And that's obviously something that uh, everybody deals with from time to time. So I love that too. So it's a pretty simple month for Fusion updates, but you should definitely subscribe and keep up on our new Fusion videos and TNC projects. Thanks.